Hey, this is Latif Mikado, and you're listening to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast, where I take some time each night to try and reflect on the freestyle scene, where it is, where it's going, and try to figure out how to sustain it, not just for future generations to enjoy, but also to benefit. So sit back, relax, and let's talk some freestyle. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Latif, and welcome to Good Night Freestyle, episode 23. Um, hope you guys are having a great day. I hope you guys are well. Uh, this household here is a little under the weather. I think I'm about to, to get it probably... By the weekend, Santana got sick, Andrew got sick, Um, just virus, flu, it's crazy. I really can't afford to get sick. I got so much to do right after the holidays, everything just kind of slows down. So I got to be, I got to be on my heavy grind. I can't, I can't be messing up. (laughs) So, um, but other than that, you know, everything is, is cool. Um. All is good. A um, couple things, uh, real quick. Um, let me pull this up real quick, um, just to get give you guys a little more information on the shows that we have coming up. Okay, so let me start with February fifteenth at the Selen Selen Arena. Uh, this is in Fresno, California. So, Stevie B, Lisa Lisa, Trinia, uh, Lania featuring Joey Restivo, Johnny O, Cynthia, Stacy Q, and of course, our very own original cover girls. So that will be on February 15, 2020, Sealand Arena. If you're in the area, please come check us out. It's going to be a great show. It's called the Valentine's Freestyle Love Jam. Don't want to miss it. That's a dope, dope uh, lineup. And then on February 28th, it's the I Love 80s and 90s. This is at the Arena Theater in Houston, Texas. Again, it's with Stevie B, Lisa Lisa, Jocelyn Enriquez. If you haven't seen her in a while, you need to come. She hasn't lost it. She's still dope as ever. And of course, our very own original cover girls. Um, And this will be Friday, February 28th, 2020 at the Arena Theater. Um, So, and this is in um, Houston, Texas, okay? So, um, anybody from Houston, Texas, I'm sure you know where the place is, all right? Then the next day, um, February 29th, okay, so the first show at the Arena Theater is a Friday. Then Saturday, we have... um, February 29th, Austin, Texas, okay? And this is basically up close and personal with the original cover girls, Andrew Caroline and Sunshine. Uh, the place is called Come and Take It Live. It's now, well, it's like uh, for one night only, uh, Come and Take It Live takes you back to cocktails. So I believe that the place was called Cocktails at one time. Now it's called Come and Take It Live. So it should be cool. It's going to be the same length and the same songs that we're performing on the other two shows uh, so you're not going to miss a thing. If anything, this is a smaller venue. It's only the cover girls. Um, so you should, um, uh, we usually do a meet and greet afterwards. So, you know, bring your, if you have any memorabilia, you have any albums, CDs, cassettes, T-shirts, whatever you have, bring them. Bring them to the venue. Let's try to get them signed. Take Bring your, your phone so you can take some pictures, okay? We're going to have a good time. So I really wanna, I want to, I want everybody to come on down. Austin is an incredible place. Every time we go there, we sell out the place. But we have a great time. The, the crowd is, is really great. It's really, really cool. So, but anyway, I just want to bring that up. So don't forget, we have those three events coming up in February. And, uh, and right now, we're still building the rest of the year. It's looking really good. Um, if you'd like to see us in any of your cities, uh, please uh, let us know. You know, go to, you can either go to, uh, well, right now, you can go to the YouTube uh 
section of Goodnight Freestyle. Right now I'm taking uh, comments, I'm accepting comments there and taking requests and just listening to people talk. So if you'd like to see the, the, any of these acts or really the cover girls um, in your area, let me know where that area is and maybe we can work on it, okay? So anyway, wife just came in with another cup of hot tea. So this was, <laughs> so yesterday, so crazy. So yesterday she told me, oh, I'm gonna try this new tea with you. Um, I think what she gave me, oh, it was the Sleepy Time Tea. I told you guys yesterday on the podcast. And so she, yeah, yeah, and I, I just wanted to make sure it didn't put me to sleep because everything puts me to sleep. So she brought the tea in, and while I was talking to you guys, I was sipping it. And this shit tastes nasty. So after the podcast, I, I put it down. Now, she knew something was wrong because I left a good portion of it. You know, I just drink it. While I'm talking to you guys, so you see, hear my, my voice sounds so much better than it did in episodes one, two, and three. But that's a little bit of nervousness along with me trying to be too relaxed, too chill, and a bunch of shit in my throat, okay? So, but anyway, um, she noticed there was still like half the cup full of tea. When she took it, when she took it away, she go, what happened? You didn't like, like the tea? I said, hell no. It was nasty. And she said, why was it nasty? She goes, this is a really good tasting tea. And then it dawned on her. She never put honey in it. I was like, what? You know, I, I need the, what is my tea or my coffee, man? I need it to be sweet. That's the only thing. Everything else I could deal, I don't need sugar all the time. You know, I'm not, I'm a big boy, but I don't walk around with soda and donuts in my pocket. Trust me when I tell you. But I need, you know, I love coffee. I, I'm a Bustelo man. I've been drinking it since the bottle. I'm not even joking. My mom used to put like a ton of sugar, a ton of milk and then some Bustelo in it and she used to shake it and I sit there and that was like my treat that was like my chocolate milk <laughs> so it was real funny I don't know if it was a good thing to do um if it wasn't she's not around anymore so she can't get in trouble but I loved it and I still do so of course I don't use milk I use cream and I use a lot more coffee and a lot less sugar I remember her she used to put a lot of sugar a lot of milk so it was basically like candy liquid candy basically you know but um but um i can't drink my coffee without sugar now trust me i tried i said man i drink my coffee i could pretty much curve the sugar everywhere else you know i don't drink soda once in a while i might drink like but i drink diet and, and that's i know that's like the worst of the two evils but i'd like like a diet ginger ale i don't drink it all the time in fact, Angel buys like the six pack of the bottles, the small bottles, and I might have a couple sips while I eat, and then I close and put it back in the fridge. And I basically drink that for the next two days. I just sip it while I eat, and that's it. A lot of times I can sit there and drink water too, but if I have that, I'm in the mood for something sweet. That's why. And it's always a diet ginger ale. It used to be diet Pepsi. I really don't like the diet Pepsi, and I hated diet Coke, so forget that. But diet Pepsi, um, and, and I, I really didn't drink the diet because I'm trying to diet. That's not going to make it work. But I kind of lost the taste for the sugar. So when I have a regular uh, soda, um, like if they make a mistake, I can taste it right away. The syrup, it just tastes so, it really doesn't taste, it's not pleasing at all. So, but anyway, so I tried a few times to do coffee without the sugar. I don't really like the sweet and lows. Like I can never get it right, man. I either make it too sweet or not sweet enough and it just never tastes right. I tried the stevia, I did the stevia. I did that other shit that comes in um like a it's almost like a syrup. Oh my god, I'm losing agua I, I forgot. You guys know what I'm talking about. Um I even tried syrup. My mom told me one time to try syrup. Uh, first of all, what's the point? For that I just stay and keep doing um I keep doing sugar, you know, why Why do syrup? It's like the same thing. The stevia just totally, totally changes the taste. And I bought a lot of stevia. I was like, I really was hoping I could find something. I tried to do it with no sugar, no nothing. I said, because my sister does it like that. And I'm like, yeah, you know, I wish I could drink my coffee like that. Uh, when I was away, we used to drink it black with sugar. And I got used to that for a long time. And that's actually good. That's better than the cream, I would think. Um, but I, I don't. I don't really desire it, you know? And the other reason is because I drink one mug, like, so I make my Bustela. I don't use the old school Spanish Cordida and all that shit. I used to use it for years. It was, a, it was a pain, and I could never make enough coffee. So I use my regular Mr. Coffee. Every year they buy me a new one. A little, I tell them, buy me the cheapest one, a little $13 one. 
uh, because if you give me a big one, it's gonna get corroded after a while and spend a lot of money and then with all the electronics and the computers, man, I just wanna put my coffee in, press the button and, and call it a day. So at the end of the year, I could toss it. A lot of times, you know, it, it's still kind of good. I try to give it away, but, and I just get a new one in. I go from a white one to a black one and back and forth. Right now I got a, what do I got? I got a black one right now. <laughs> so, and I got, I just got rid of a white one. So, so funny. Um, but um, I only drink my one cup of Bustelo in the morning, and once, and I really don't even finish it. And it's in a big one of those big, um, those big mugs that have the cover on it, like you know the traveling tumblers or whatever. And um, so I drink one of those every morning, and that kind of gets me going. I might have some crackers, maybe a string cheese, something like that. That's my morning. I'm not really a big breakfast eater. Um, definitely don't like sweet stuff in the morning. So if I'm gonna eat pancakes or waffles or cereal, I actually eat that stuff at night. Yeah, I know, not a good thing, but I'm not really big on the morning eating. So I usually eat around noon, one o'clock. Again, also not good, I know. <laughs> but um, so anyway, so I don't make a big deal out of the sugar and the coffee. I do like three scoops and that's it. So, but anyway, I just wanted to bring that up about the, the tea because I was over here sipping this tea and you guys couldn't see it, but I was making some damn faces. I was like, what the hell is this she gave me? But she had forgot the, the honey, you know? So, um, so um, yeah, so anyway, but uh, other than that, um, everything else is cool. We got these shows happening. Um, it's Thursday right now, so tomorrow's Friday. Uh, Everything's looking, uh, everything's looking good. Uh, work is picking up. I'm getting a lot of calls. I mean, I'm getting calls from Toronto, from Philly. I got calls coming in from uh, like Tampa, Florida, uh, Salinas, California. Um, quite a few places. So it looks like it's gonna be uh, a pretty good, um, a pretty good uh, year. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, I really hope you guys, um, I don't know if you guys make any of these shows, you know? I mean, I, I'm gonna always encourage you guys to try and make it to these shows, if you can. I know they're not cheap and sometimes they're a little bit out of the way. You know, I can't really, I can't twist anybody's arm because I'm not really big on going on any shows. But you see, that's just my craziness. I'm just really not. Um, into uh, I'm not really into uh, crowds like that. You know, I know, yeah, I know. I'm in the music business and I deal with crowds, but you know, you'll be surprised of um, how I really want to do the show and go. A lot of times when we meet with people we know, or if we do a uh, like a meet and greet, we usually have a different section. So it's usually controlled, uh, but it's the part of the job that I really have to kind of like fight through. You know, because it's the only part that, you know, you got to think about it. You know, you know, everybody's looking in your direction. You're in a venue that has a small venue. It's like a thousand people. That's a lot of people, you know. So you're in this, you know, so you have people, you know, you're, you're basically in, in the in the line of focus. I know, yeah, they're looking at the artist, but they're going to spot you too. They spot me because I'm standing right there and they, they usually see me and they know I'm involved. They see me when I walk, walk in the door with the, with the girls a lot of times, if I have to readjust the mic while they're up there before the girls get in, they'll see me get up on the stage. They'll see me walk behind the DJ booth to get the sound ready. So they see me and they know my connection. Then sometimes it's a little nerve-wracking. The, the anxiety starts to kick in. Um, <clears throat> and uh, it's, it's, it's a rough one, but it, it's part of the, the job. So I work with it. You know, I work with it. Uh, but I, I do it if you if you love the concerts if you love going to the shows I will encourage you to, to check them out man. I think I, I still I still think these artists do such an incredible job. They really do They really do it's it's crazy. I mean you you go to one of the freestyle explosions um, Like the one that we're doing is the February 15th. That's a Valentine's freestyle jam uh, freestyle love jam um, but the promoters behind that, the ones that are behind the, free, the Super Freestyle Explosion, those are huge, and we do them all over the country. I love working with them, man. They're so organized. I mean, like, everything is on point. All you got to do is do what they tell you to do. You know, if you make things hard, then it becomes hard for you. But that's not the way to do this, man. You know, 
you don't want you know you, you don't want no issues you want to go in there and make it as smooth as you possibly can and i gotta give it to the promoters they try i understand they really do they try to keep everything really organized and they try to accommodate you you know they can't accommodate everybody the way everybody wants there's a lot of artists in there so you have to see what they're offering and what they're doing. And if you really want to work with them and you want to kind of go the distance, you gotta you gotta bend a little bit. You can't be a hard ass. You know, it's one of the, the things that have kept me pretty successful in my market and what I do for a living is my ability to work with these promoters and be on the same page. And I'm very understanding and I'm a team player. And I'm very easy to accommodate and I understand issues. I understand. So if you know, some artists will demand this, 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 and that, knowing damn well that it's basically impossible. And if it's not impossible, it's like, you're going to be on stage for 20 minutes. Why? Why do this to the promoter? Why put the promoter through this? I think it's silly. You know, I would, a lot of times I got to bite the bullet, you know? I could be a hard ass to get exactly what I want to get. I got good acts. They will give me... But I understand. They're not doing it intentionally, you know? So, you know, some artists that will be like, well, I want to stay in that, that hotel. I want to stay in this one. And that hotel, that other hotel's like across town. And it's like, you know, the promoter's like, man, now I got I got people, I have cars that go to this hotel. Now I got to get a separate car to go to that hotel. And then if those people are not ready on time, I have to wait. You know, it becomes a problem. And don't do that. Really, don't do that. It's crazy. You know, I, I see I see a lot of it. I see a lot of it. The acts are not mean people. They're, they're not mean people. I, I don't think I don't think we have mean artists in freestyle. I'm I'm trying to think, do we? Do we have any mean artists? I don't think so. And if they have and if they're mean, they're probably mean because of a situation. But I've worked with probably every freestyle... I'm talking about relevant freestyle artists that are out there. Not the really the ones, and I'm not, I'm not dogging them saying they're not relevant. Meaning, they're not really doing anything outside of their neighborhood. They're basically in their area. But any of the ones that are jumping on planes on a regular basis and flying out, I've worked with all of them. You name them. Coral, Johnny, George, Stevie, Lisa, Expose, uh, Trinia. Debbie, Freestyle, Cover Girl, Susie. Um, so, yeah, so I, I, I've worked with, you know, I've worked with everybody. So, um, and it, it's cool. It, it's cool. It's a blessing. It's It really is. Um, uh, and I never had issues. Actually, the, the artists that I have the most issues with, this is just so crazy, are the ones that never go out. The ones that, probably haven't hit the road in about a year all of a sudden they get a gig and they start demanding shit and it's like you know what do you tell them like i usually i didn't book them a lot of times these acts when promoters call me and they ask me for the these acts a lot of times you know i don't want the act to lose uh the gig so i'll step aside and just give the promoter that contact for a couple of reasons number one like I said, the ones that don't go out that often, they're kind of stuck in the 80s, meaning back in the 80s, you were catered to. You got limousines. I mean, they, they kissed your ass. Okay, now it's a little more lax. We don't really do the limos. We do SUVs. Limos are kind of played out, kind of corny, to be real. Um, we like, a lot of times, we like to stay in hotels close to, uh, close to the airport so therefore we'll shuttle it back in the days the contract said no no shuttles or public transportation so if you flew into an airport no matter what those promoters had to go get you they had to send a car and pick you up and sometimes the car had to be a limo um, and they wouldn't they would, you know you couldn't they uh, they couldn't send you on a shuttle or they couldn't, you couldn't take a cab to the hotel. That had to be taken care of. Now, with me, I think I might have started this trend, to be honest, um, because that was like the way it always was. You send me a limo, you send me a luxury limousine or like those luxury vans. 
and that's how you brought them to the hotel from the airport. And the airport could be three minutes away, it could be around the corner. I mean the hotel, it could be right around the corner and they'll still send a car. What I tell them is I'm like, listen, put me at the airport. Like when we do Chicago, there's a Hilton that's literally inside the airport. You don't even have to, it could be pouring or snowing outside, you'll never know it. Cause you go right from the airport straight to the to the hotel. So it's really cool. And I wish we had more like that. The other ones you have to go outside and catch a shuttle. It's usually like right around the corner, not far, five minutes away. I like those because I don't have to sit there and wait for the promoter. Also, the next day, okay, and not everybody, 98% of the promoters are cool. They're going to be at the lobby on time and they're going to get you back to the airport if you're not staying close to it, okay? But then there are those who you've come down and you know you have a flight, you're supposed to be at the airport at 6 a.m. and it's already 6 a.m. and they're not there and that becomes a problem so and then we have to catch a cab and then we take a money and we catch a cab now I have to get on the phone and get that cab money back because it's just the way they did business and if they want to keep the cab money that's cool but we will spread the word and the next time that they do something like that or they want to book us what we got to do is get that um that cab money ahead of time um usually it's a hundred dollars or whatever um and then what they do is when they bring us back to the airport the next day, we pay them. You see, the whole thing is that once the show is over, it's like, okay, it's over. We don't, I don't need you. I don't need to kiss, kiss your ass. They kiss your ass from the day they book you. You're not even over there till when you get there, till you, till you get on stage. But once that show is over, there's a, there's a few of them that will just all of a sudden they disappear. Yeah, <laughs> You know? So... That's why it's very important, and that's why artists make sure that they are paid before they hit that stage. Any artist who's listening to this, don't ever get on that stage without getting your money first. No excuses, no, I gotta wait for the manager, no, we gotta go on now because of the fire department, no, that's too bad. You better hurry up, because that's why I tell them, oh, you know, because they, they ask me. Hey, man, you don't wait for the manager. He's going to be here any minute. Can you just go on stage? I'll, I'll have the money right here when you get off the stage. I'm like, nope. Oh, but, they, but they're about to, they're going to shut us down soon. I'm like, well, you better hurry up. They shut us down. Just go back to the hotel. I still got my deposit, you know? So you can't play that, unfortunately, you know, because they will get over. There are those that will get over. The majority of them are good. They'll be straight up. But you can't take a risk with them either. Just It's just not policy. It's just not the way to do business, you know? So... But yeah, so we like to stay at the at the at the, at the stay um, at a hotel by the airport. It's so much easier uh, um, to go back and forth, you know. But you know, but yeah, and that's one of the reasons. And then the other reason why uh, a lot of times I won't book some of those acts. Really, it's the money, man. I'm gonna be real. It's the money. Um, I only make ten percent, so the money has to be significant. You know, if if it's I can't really. It's a lot of work. It really is. Some people, it's a lot of work for those who don't go off, the, off out that often because they're not custom. See, I book a, uh, some of the acts that are out there on a the regular. If I book a Stevie or Cora or George or, you know, I'm talking about outside of my own acts. I mean, we already have it down pat. We know our communication is early. Sometimes we don't even talk over the phone. Email, boom. Money's in, that. Everything's on point. They know exactly. We don't have to do anything. Everything, we all know what we have to do and it's smooth sailing when you're dealing with the ones that don't go off go out that much they're asking you a million questions they're demanding this and they're demanding that you start hearing things like oh well i never did it that way man you haven't been on the road for 20 years what do you mean you you never did it back then <laughs> and like this way we don't care you know so and that's the only thing now if any of those artists come to me and they're like yo la i don't want to make shit rough man can you kind of yeah kind of Kind of school me, kind of update me, not school me, update me on how the process is these days. That's the key. How's the process these days? And I'll run them through, even if they're not booking through me. They can go book through somebody else. But I'll let them know. I'll tell them how to do it. I would love to see them work. I would love to see them go out there and do their thing. That's beautiful. And that's what we're doing with this genre. This is That's the whole goal. The whole goal. The, the goal isn't to hide information so no one can do this because this genre will not exist if the only artist left is the cover girls it just won't exist so and the more artists that exist the more opportunities it it, it it builds it creates for all of us you know so and then like i said for the money you know if i'm making 10 percent, 
It's got to be worth it to me. It really is. Not that they'll lose the show. I'll just get out of the middle. You know, I don't need the 10%. I don't need to make 50 bucks. You know what I'm saying? I don't need to make... I don't even, I don't need to make a hundred bucks, you know? So, you know, I think, you know, my minimum is like a $3,000 act. $300 act, a $300 commission is cool because I can make that in literally 10 minutes. So, um, so it's, it's worth it to me, you know? And I could do, and if I have a lot of seasoned acts, um, I could do a lot of those. Sometimes I'll book an entire concert and everybody's on, it's all major players, and uh, it becomes a very, very um, significant payday, you know? Um, and it's worth it, you know? And even that, it's like the, the work is less. It's less stressful dealing with the, with the acts you make the most money with. And it's more stressful with the artists that you make the least amount of money with. It's the truth, man. If I'm hurting any, I'm not naming names, so I shouldn't be hurting anybody's feelings. But if you feel guilty, then you might know something that, you might know something. So think about it. If you want to call me or contact me or message me, <clears throat> let me know. I'm here. I'll help you out. Any, any of you guys know, you guys know how I roll. So, but anyway. So I just want to throw that up there. And um, I appreciate it. I appreciate everything. You know how you guys are. Uh, you guys are really the bomb. I really appreciate it. I'm really getting a lot of love. I'm getting a lot of people hitting me up, telling me how they feel. I mean, just totally going out their way and sending me a message to tell me how much they're enjoying this. And it's it's so important to me, man. It's so important to me. You know, you never think, does anybody want to hear like your shit? Why anybody want to hear your shit, you know? But people find it interesting, and I, I can I can understand that. I can understand it, you know. So I I really appreciate that, and I'm gonna do my best just to keep it going and, and keep it keep it interesting, and try to have fun, and at the same time see if I could you know if I can you know give you guys any kind of gems that you could take with you, whether you want to get into the business or. Something that you could share with somebody. Well, maybe it's not about the business. Maybe it's not about freestyle. I should talk about other things too. Maybe there's something in there that enlightens you. Something that inspired you. If so, man, I would love to hear it. I really would. So, um, next week, I'm going to release the Goodnight Freestyle Facebook page. Okay? And we're probably going to try to bring everything in there. So, any questions, anything like that, bring it in there. Just... So I have a central place. Most of our market, once of, most of the freestyle people, freestyle fans, even the artists are on Facebook. That's like the, the primary medium, you know. You guys got Instagram too, but pretty much everybody has Facebook. So we'll use that as the central location to interact with one another, you know. And if you have any, any ideas or any goals or anything that you, you want to do, you know, if you're thinking, if you've ever thought about breaking into this genre, let me know. Let me know. I even got a book about it, but you don't even have to buy the book. I'll tell you what it, I'll tell you is whatever information. I, I won't read the book to you, but I'll tell you everything I remember. <laughs> if you got the time and you're willing to listen. So, all right, guys. Until tomorrow. Good night, Freestyle. Before I lay me down to sleep, I pray to hear a freestyle beat. For if I die before I wake, I hope to make it to the break.